So I'm Robin Murray. Uh, I'm a Microsoft Cloud Solution Architect uh, based out of the Netherlands. And I'm going to talk about my governor sharing app. Now, what the hell does that app do? It, um, it basically gives the team or site owner the ability to uh, show documents that have been explicitly shared with other users, uh, either to an internal user or, or guest or, or to everyone. Uh, and either by giving them direct access or via a sharing link. And of course, th this picture does say a thousand words, but I think a demo uh, is better. Uh, so this web part <coughs> uh, runs in SharePoint, of course, because it's a SharePoint frame web part. And uh, it also runs in the beauty of Teams. And the cool thing about why it's running in Teams is that we also get Teams uh, context. Um, uh, and it, uh, the cool thing about that is I can also know which group the team site is a, is, is, is a part of, uh, and thus I can also get documents from private channels, which are, of course, separate site collections. Um, and I think, is it on this one? No, I think it's on the second page. There is an actual document in secrets, and secrets is, of course, this secret channel. Um, so let's uh, talk about on how we uh, build this. And uh, and what you need to get it uh, to get it to run. Uh, so the first thing is that the only thing I need from an API permission perspective is the sites that read all for the graph. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why I wanted to have a a, a, um, a graph permission. Right, it's actually on, on the screen is because I'm uh, getting the sharing information from the drive item permissions endpoint. And also, uh, it's good to know that all code runs, of course, in the context of the current login user. Uh, hence, it's a delegated call. Um, and I make use of search. So all the documents you will see are securely trimmed. Uh, and therefore, also all the calls to the permissions endpoint will work because the user has access to those documents. Right, so I gave it away. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, so first, we are issuing a search query uh, towards the graph endpoint, uh, and that's the primary reason of that is to retrieve the drive item ID of those files. Um, then, based on the number of files I get back, uh, I put the file IDs into a, a state in SharePoint Framework, and use that for pagination. And the reason for the pagination is I want to do a batch call of maximum of, of 15 files on each substantial call because the data from search could be stale. Um, uh, so I want to really see what's really happening. And the information from search is not complete. Uh, for example, a sharing link does not appear uh, in, a, uh, in the managed property I'm using. Uh, so hence, uh, but it is shared, which is uh, coming back. So that reason I'm calling the permission endpoint. And then, of course, uh, because the maximum, I think, uh, items you can do in one batch call is 15, uh, or perhaps it's 20, but I think 15 is uh, is more better. Is, is better. I don't want to overload the system. Uh, and also, to not overload the system, uh, I implemented paging. Um, I am using, I make use of the PPGS library to also uh, client-side cache uh, the results I get back. Um, and I use search. So uh, let's dive in because perhaps most people don't know you can do this with, within search. So the reason why I'm using search is it doesn't really matter how many documents are in a team site or uh, or on a, on a SharePoint library. Uh, it, it just works and, and it's quick. Um, and it, the, 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 the second cool thing is it's security trimmed. So you only see which uh, items and documents your permissions to. And the second or the first thing is um, and this is actually did, did blew my mind. Uh, I didn't know that this was possible. I think since a year this is possible. Um, uh, but now you can also do like a wildcard search for a single managed property just to see if something is in the property. Um, and that's why. So this is how my uh, career looks like. So I make use of the share with users OES user managed property. Uh, and there I put in a wildcard. Uh, that's basically gives me back all if a document has been shared with a user or with using sharing link. Um, and the other two are, uh, it's the everyone except external users uh, or the everyone user. 
Uh, then the second thing uh, in, in filtering out what we want to get back is I want to e either get documents back and I want to have folders back. So that's is documents true or is containers true. We don't want to get uh, .aspx pages back, so we're not interested in news pages or home pages for, the, for that matter. And uh, if we're in Teams, uh, I also want to scope um, the query down to get documents back from the current group ID and or the related group IDs, and that's like the private channels. <clears throat> Uh, and if we're only in SharePoint, uh, I'm going to filter only on the current site using the site URL. So that's basically to filter all the documents uh, which we get back. So once we have that, so this is how, by the way, it looks like in code. Um, it's against uh, the Graph API. Uh, this is how the query. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty straightforward. And it's, it's also, um, uh, how do you say that? It, uh, it, it can call itself if there are more than 500 documents within uh the the library um or at least five more than five documents are being uh, fetched it does it again uh, until i reach uh the limit on the uh, amount of documents which are shared um there's a word for that i don't know what the english word is again but it substantially calls itself until it's done so next we have the set of the files uh, and then we're gonna uh, check per file what the permissions are using the permissions endpoint uh, the reason for that is I want to know how things are being shared and if the file is still being shared uh, or the file is being shared via inheritance permissions, so not an explicit sharing. This is how it looks like uh, in code. Uh, in the current PMPJS library I'm using, there was no uh, option yet to, uh, to use the permissions endpoint. Uh, hence, I am um, uh, doing the graph variable um, method getting all the items uh this is the json i get back and i also take a look um, on in the in the in the um, demo later on how the the whole uh, json looks like but this is um what i get back for a single uh, drive item id and this is a subset of the uh of, of the data i get back for a specific document uh, I think that's it for now, uh, uh, unless I can also go in, 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 in into the details. So what I also want to get out is the next steps. So the next steps is uh, basically, so um, I wanted to share that in the beginning as well. This is not a competition against uh, a graph that you connect um, um, uh, offering that, that we also have, right? So that's like a tenant wide set of data about documents being shared. Um, but it will be nice to integrate with that. Uh, so instead of doing a search query, we're doing a query against that um, the Azure data storage uh, to get the, the shared data documents from there. Or perhaps read the CSV file, which gets created if you do if you run a site sharing report. Um, and um, the other thing I want to work on is uh, extend the governor suite because uh, so hence the name is this is now governor sharing and I'm also working on governor storage uh, to give you more insights on the difference between consumed storage and reported storage within SharePoint. Um, and uh, how actually this whole app became is uh, I want to add a Blazor version. So. Uh, the history of this app is we I did a version first version in Blazor. Uh, I showed it to a customer, uh, enterprise customer, and I, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we 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 want this. Um, how can we? Um, what's the timeline? I'm saying, well, you can you need to set up an Azure website, and they were like, ah, okay, then we need to talk to the Azure people. Uh, okay, that, that probably like will take like 12 weeks to get something up and running. Um, and then I was like, okay, perhaps I should just use Shepman Framework. Uh, and make use uh, of the infrastructure already there to deploy the app. Um, and from there on, I use Shepard Framework uh, to create this app. But I also want to create a Blazor version of, uh, of the app. So you have the possibility uh, of using two technologies. Um, yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, woo, back to you, Chris, I guess.